Okay, things are starting to, well, get really close to coming to an end. In this video, what we're going to do is add in all of our code into the methods for the Game Manager class. All right, let's load up Game Manager and take a look. We begin with Show Title Screen, where we need to go in, clear anything out that might be on the screen, and then say something like, Welcome to the game, press help, or press begin, stuff like that. Right. So... We're going to jump up um, right before the Welcome to Hyperion and actually run our clear. This is just in case we were doing anything else, had text on the screen or whatever. Um, so we'll run a console.clear. And then I'll do a right line just to have a blank line so we space one off the top. Just so we push our text down a little. So right line. <clears throat> now we need to show the welcome message, which is... Basically like this, just format it a little bit nicer, and then uh, just the actual text for this version. So we'll do a few stars, maybe say the Hyperion project. And XNA Extreme 101 game by 3D Buzz. Then we can add in some um, add like three new lines. New lines, yeah. And let's see, that'll be all we need for the text. Now, something I want to do here, since of course the game that was originally released, the playable version, had more text that Zach had for his version of the game. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is instead of directly sending this entire line out to right line, I actually want to put this inside of a word wrap so that if okay. we ever make this line longer than we'll fit on the screen, it'll word wrap properly. Which, gee, that's handy. We actually have access to text utils. <laughs> so we can use the text utils word wrap method. Feed it this string. Now we also need to feed word wrap the width of our buffer. So we'll feed in our console's window width. And let's see, we need to clo have the closing parenthesis for our word wrap and we could almost let's see take this parameter I'm just going to mess around with uh, white space a little bit and move this out just make it a little bit more easier to read so that way we have parameter one is this string and whatever it contains and then parameter two is or argument two is the window width okay it's on a separate line for readability then after we have the uh, title shown we need to um, say something like, uh, maybe give a help message. So we'll have the console write out a line saying, um, so we'll give it an extra new line before it. Note, you may type help at any time to see a list of commands. And this one won't be run through word wrap because just through testing we found that that doesn't cause a wrap, and that's right. going to be a simple generic message. Then after that, the last thing we need to do is have uh, the last thing as far as display is concerned is to have a uh, a message that says press the key to begin. So I'll write out a line with an extra new line in front of it called or saying press. A key to begin. Now, from here, it's going to be a little interesting because, mm -hmm. as you all know, we've been doing the read line, which reads an entire line, which means if you press a key, what's going to happen? It's going to echo that key out. So you're just going to see that key on screen, and, and you can, can see a lot of pressing key. keys until you finally hit enter. Plus, we also see our cursor flashing. We want to get rid of the cursor flashing and have basically everything hold up here until the user presses a key, and then we continue on. That means, to begin with, we need to take the read line, change that to read key. Now, if we leave this alone, since this is the first thing that happens, we should be able to build and then run the game just to see what we've got so far. Okay. So, we can run what we've got, and there we go. We have the Hyperion project, our help note, and then press the key to begin. Now, when we press a key, like let's press the letter A, you see it actually shows um, something on the screen. Right. And we want to set it so that the cursor is invisible, so that we just read and then continue. Right. So we'll first begin with a console 
dot uh, cursor visible. Say cursor visible, and we'll set that to false. We'll read the key. Now we need to make the cursor visible again after we read the key, otherwise we won't be able to see the cursor flashing when we're typing commands. Right. So we need to take that and set it back to true. Or rather, console.cursor visible is equal to true. And turn right around and go ahead and clear the console. Right, because if we want when we begin the game we don't want to leave the message uh, just sitting there. So we'll have our console clear itself. All right. So cool. now if we build and run the game... So you'll notice there's no flashing cursor or anything right there. Nice so and clean. Press any key like I'll press the space bar. And, and now we go. get a blank screen with a flashing cursor. Okay, very cool. All right, let's see. What else do we have inside of the uh, game manager? Well, let's move on to start game. <coughs> Now, start game is actually pretty simple. It just needs to take the player in the room he's in, have him describe the room, and then display that out. Okay. So we'll use player. We'll tell player to get its current room. And then that will tell that room to describe itself. And after we do that, the uh, player or the room's describe is going to use the text buffer. But because we're not inside of the command processor, we never tell the text buffer to display anything, um, at least not inside of player or room. So we need to do that here. We need to take our text buffer and tell it to display. And this is where things really get kicked off because it's going to say, what do you want to do next? Something along those lines. Right. Um, so that's all we're going to do in start game again. Very simple, just showing some or showing the room and then having the text buffer dump whatever it was holding out. Okay. And this will bring us of course, up to for those of you that are thinking, well, but let's test that. We don't have a room yet. <laughs> all right. We even if we called start game, there's no room we can exist in no. that would have text. Exactly. All right. End game. First thing that end game needs to do is to tell the program that it's going to quit because we have this game set up so that once the game ends, that's just it. Right. The, the whole program exits. So we'll grab our program and set its quit variable to true. And once the program's been marked as um, should quit, now we need to clear the console, so clear whatever game information was on the screen, back off, and then write the ending message. So we need to take our console, have it clear. Now we need to write out the uh, the ending text. So we'll take our console, we'll write a line. Now again, we want to do um, word wrapping ability because what we're going to do here is take in. As a matter of fact, we need to actually add on to end game a little bit. I think it there was actually a small piece of it that was missed from the methods ah, lesson. Ah, gotcha. Let me actually jump up. What um, The way endgame is supposed to work is it's supposed to take in a string for the ending text. Right. That way we can reuse the same endgame method even if there happen to be different endings in the game. We just pass the different ending as an argument. So let me define the parameter for that argument. We'll say that this is going to be a string, and it's going to be called ending text. Now, ending text is what we want to write out here, but because we don't know what's in ending text, it could very well be longer than or wider than the width of the screen. So we need to run this through word wrap. So we'll use our text utils we'll word wrap the ending text. Now, of course, we also need to feed it the uh, buffer width. So again, console dot window width. And let's see. And that takes care of the word route, and that takes care of the right line, so we're done with that. That will handle our ending text. Now we need to say something. Um, the way we're going to have the endings work is we're going to have them such that you can't press a key to exit the app. We're going to hold the, uh, the app open so that no one can accidentally miss their ending by pressing keys or pressing enter. But because of that, because there's nothing you can type to end the game, we need to hint uh, you have to close by hitting the close button. So we can do something simple like uh, writing out saying that you may now close the window. So we'll write line, uh, we'll add an extra new line character and then say you may now close 
this window. And that takes care of the rest of our messages. Now we again want to take the um, the cursor, make it invisible, so we just see one nice static screen. So I have our consoles, cursor visible, set to false. Yay, spelling. All right. And the last thing that I want to do is, like we were talking about, have the game stop at end game and not continue for any reason, any key presses or anything. So I'm going to start a simple loop, a simple while loop, and the condition will be while true. So basically loop indefinitely. And basically in this infinite loop, we'll tell the console to read a key. And for read key, <clears throat> we can also, um, you saw earlier when we were using read key, if we jump back up to title screen, you saw how when we uh, type things in, you would still see what was being typed. There's actually a, uh, a way we can call read key so that it won't, um, won't show what's being typed. And if we pass it a boolean, actually. Like so, that means that read key will be looking for a key, but it won't show that key once it's pressed. And with that, that should take care of endgame. Again, we tell the program to quit, clear the screen, show an ending message, and then just wait at read key forever. All right. Now that leaves... Oh, actually, before I get any further, let me build make sure that everything's working. Okay. And it is. Now, apply rules. This... Um, We'll get back to this when we have some I, when we yeah. have a level to apply rules. I agree. To. At this point, putting in rules since we're doing the apply rules section in such a how do I say it game specific way, meaning for each level designer that creates a game using our engine, the apply rules is going to have to have code that's related to the game that they designed. So this section would change. So let's just go ahead and wait until we put some rooms together, put some items in there, then we'll make a rule or two and put that rule in here. So with that, that's pretty much everything that we want to add into the game manager at this time, and that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks.